Hi everyone, welcome to a new session on the Apply Tools step-by-step -step guide. Today, I will show you how to apply UI testing for a React application using Apply Tools Eyes SDK for Storybook. I've chosen the React 95 UI library that heavily uses Storybook stories. I will run the Apply Tools Eyes SDK, get our UI test runs generated, and then verify the results on the Apply Tools dashboard. Before we start our demo, let me show you how Apply Tools does UI testing for applications that are using Storybook. First of all, you start by writing the Storybook stories. Then, you install and run the Eyes SDK for Storybook. The SDK extracts the Storybook stories, uses Puppeteer to render the components. Then the client-side API of the Eyes SDK generates DOM snapshots for all the components and uploads them to the Apply Tools backend servers. There, the Apply Tools Visual Grid component kicks in and generates screenshots from the DOM snapshots. The snapshots are then compared to any baseline snapshots and the visual differences are reported on the Apply Tools dashboard. I will start by cloning the React 95 UI library repository locally on my machine. The project itself is hosted on GitHub. Let's grab the git URL from here, we copy it, and then we go to Visual Studio Code or any other editor that you are using and issue the following command, git clone, and we paste in the git URL. This process usually takes a few seconds before we get all the repository files downloaded and stored locally on our machine. Let's review the project files together. Everything is stored inside the folder React95. The components are stored inside components folder. As you can see, we have a long list of components, part of this UI library. For instance, the model component is defined inside the model.jsx file and has all the CSS, uh, HTML markup and the code in one file. Also, as you can see, we have Storybook already configured for us inside the .storybook folder. And all the stories are stored here, inside the stories folder. One last thing, I will go to the package.json file and make sure I have the Storybook npm script there, which we have indeed. Great. Now let's move inside the folder that we have just created. And I will issue the following command, npm install. This command would download all the packages, the npm packages that are required by this uh, library and install them locally on my machine. I will hit enter for the process to start. Okay, the process is done. If you have noticed, now we have a new directory or folder at the root of the uh, library, which is the node underscore modules. This folder contains all the AMP packages that are required and needed by this library. Great. Now let's try to run the storybook stories by issuing the following command, npm run storybook. This command should start the storybook playground and render all the stories for you. So as you can see, we have all these uh, stories written for this library. Let's check the model one. We have a single story, which is the model uh, dialog. As you can see, the dialog has the theme of the Windows 95. And also the case of other stories, for example, the button. It's like a Windows 95 button. Let's check other components like the progress bar for example, the text area component, and also the tree component. Now that the storybook is up and running, let's move on and install the Apply Tools Eyes SDK for Storybook and start adding some visual UI testing. You can visit the Apply Tools Eyes SDK for Storybook GitHub page there you can browse the source code of the SDK and also enjoy the amazing 
documentation that the team have provided there on their GitHub page. And to install the eyes SDK for Storybook, you can go to this npm uh, page. You can grab this command from here and then go to your editor and paste the command. Now you have iStoryBook installed locally into your application. Before you can run iStoryBook, you need first of all to configure the AppliTools API key environment variable, which is used by the AppliTools engine while running your test to authenticate your requests. So basically, you would go to the AppliTools dashboard and then access the accounts menu and then click on my API key, copy the API key, go back to the editor. If you are on a MacBook machine, you would say export applitools underscore API underscore key equals, and then you paste in your API key. And if you are on a Windows machine, you would write the following set Apply tools API key equals the API key you have copied from the website. So this is a very important step before you can run the eyes uh, SDK for storybook. Now let's try to run the eyes storybook by issuing the following command npx eyes dash storybook and hit enter. What happens now is that Apply tools would go grab all the stories we have in the solution it will start running them generate DOM snapshots out of each story and then uploads all the DOM snapshots to the AppliTools backend server uh, there we have the AppliTools visual uh, grid component that will convert all the DOM snapshots into actual screenshots and then after that, all the screenshots would be compared to baseline screenshots, if we have any on the server. And the uh, visual differences and changes would be reported on the AppliTools uh, dashboard. So this is, uh, since this is our first run, we can see that no differences were found. And also we can see this URL here, which takes you directly to the uh, AppliTools dashboard to check the results. Let's go to AppliTools and uh, AppliTools dashboard and hit refresh. As you can see, we have this test batch here on the left side, which is called the React slash core. Uh, it has a status of past, which means that there is nothing wrong with this test run. And since this is the first test run, we can expect this result. So if you click on this test uh, batch result, you can see the list of all test runs within this uh, batch uh, test. Let's locate the uh, model uh, test and click it. Here we have a single snapshot that was generated by AppliTools engine. Let's expand the snapshot to see it bigger. As you can see, it's a, just a copy of the uh, storybook story that we have uh, in our application. So let's go back to the uh, rest of the test runs and take another example like the tree component for instance. Let's click on it and we can see the tree component uh, snapshot rendered for us. Now that our visual UI tests are successfully running, let's move on and talk about a unique feature that AppliTools offers which is the visual regression testing. By visual regression testing, you can later on introduce changes to your source code run the tests again and AppliTools would still compare the new snapshots to the baseline ones and report the visual changes accordingly, if there is any changes there. This way, if your code changes introduce any visual UI change in your application, AppliTools would capture that for you. Also, there might be some changes added that are actually needed and wanted in your application. In this case, you would accept the changes reported by Apply Tools and hence make them the new baseline for future regression test runs. Let's switch back to our application 
and introduce a visual change in one of our components. For this, I will go to the model component. I will locate the title bar uh, CSS styles and change the background color from this one to simply yellow. Let's save and then run our tests again. MPX eyes storybook and hit enter. Again, the same process goes on. Applitools goes and locates all the stories, runs them, generates a DOM snapshot, snapshots, uploads them to the server. Uh, the backend would do all the comparisons with the baseline and the uh, results will be reported on the dashboard. So let's see how this test run goes and what is the feedback from Applitools on running this second test run. Okay, as you can see, we have a total of one difference was found, which means that one of the stories, which is the model, in fact, uh, failed, which means that there has been a change in the model component compared to the baseline one. Let's go back to uh, the Epi Tools dashboard and hit refresh here to see the second test run. So for the second batch, First, you notice the unresolved status, which means that there is some change uh, in this test run batch and it requires a human intervention to decide on whether to accept or reject the change. So as you can see, we have most of the test runs are passed, except this one, which is unresolved. Let's click on it and expand. So basically you can see this highlighted title bar which signals that there has been a change in this area here. Let's go to this menu and click on show both. This way you would see the baseline on the left and the, the new screenshot uh, on the right side. So as you can see we have this not equal or mismatch uh, icon to show that there is a certain change here. And the change is basically in the title bar of the model window. So what can we do now? If you locate these two icons on the top right of the screen, the first one, which is the thumbs up, it means that if you click on this icon or button, you are accepting the new changes in this new screenshot, which means that this new screenshot here will be the new baseline for your tests. So in the future, if you run again your tests, it will the, the results will be compared to this one with the title bar of background color yellow, not this original one. On the other hand, if you click on the thumbs down icon, which means that I want to reject the changes uh, in this new uh, screenshot, in this new test, and hence maintain my original uh, baseline. So let's accept the new changes and then hit save. So we go back to the uh, list of test runs and you can see that now we have the status of this test run marked as passed. Eventually the whole batch is marked as passed and hence now we have a new baseline for the model uh, component. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the demo and see you in the coming videos. 